What does today's Brazil and Nazism have in common? Today we're going to talk about Foucault's concept of state racism and how we can see that going on in today's Brazil. My name is Rodrigo Guim, anthropologist and social critic, and this is Critique with Nietzsche and Foucault. In the course entitled In Defense of Society of 1976, Michel Foucault leads us to understand modern racism as a technique and technology of the state. Modern racism implies a biopower, a power that understands that the death of others is necessary for the strengthening of a person, a population or a state. Killing and dying is necessary for the modern racist state. It's by the death of others that you have the strengthening of the race. Says Foucault, citation. In general, racism, I think, assures the function of death in the economy of biopower, according to the principle that the death of others is the biological strengthening of oneself, insofar as he is a member of a race or a population, insofar as one is an element in a unitary and living plurality. End of citation. So you have in a society where biopower operates, technologies and techniques of power that will not only justify death based on ideology or based on a mentality or based on lies. The power over death is justified in the racist state based on the strengthening of life. But of course, the lives of those who, according to the state, deserve to live. The state creates a hierarchy in the value of life. The good citizen in today's Brazil is the discourse of the racist state to justify death. Foucault says, citation, Racism is linked to the functioning of a state that is obliged to use race, the elimination of races, and the purification of the race to exercise its sovereign power. You understand, then, under these conditions, how and why the most murderous states are, at the same time, necessarily the most racist. End of citation. In today's Brazil, for example, race war is not necessarily used as a discourse. A more liberal discourse of totalization of the state is used in the discourse of the good citizen, but it's also used as a discourse of the citizens' war against others. And the wars continue. Brazil is the country that most kills by firearms worldwide. But this doesn't cause a commotion, because those who die the most are young black people. So you see in practice that racism no longer needs racial discourse to act in practice. And we have a government today that wants to arm the population even more. President Bolsonaro wants the entire population to arm itself so that, according to him, we would avoid a dictatorship. This ghost of the internal enemy is a biopolitical device, as Foucault has shown. The population needs to be constantly reactivated in its propensity to eliminate internal enemies, like a body that needs to eliminate internal viruses or sicknesses. But the funny and tragic thing is that when a real virus reaches the population, that same virus is treated with the greatest normality by this same president who wants to fight internal enemies as if they were viruses. This shows once again that the power to kill is the greatest power in this biopolitical order over everything else. Even a deadly virus is treated as if nothing has changed 
on the agenda because, as Foucault says, citation, it is necessary to reach a point where the entire population is exposed to death. Only this universal exposure of the entire population to death can effectively constitute it as a superior race and definitively regenerate it before the races that have been totally exterminated or that will be definitively subjected. End of citation. There's nothing to do. People will die. The strong will survive. That's the discourse. No meu caso particular pelo meu histórico de atleta. Caso fosse contaminado pelo vírus, não precisaria me preocupar. Nada sentiria ou seria, quando muito, acometido de uma gripezinha ou resfriadinho. The weak will die because they deserve to die. That is the logic. So that the strong become stronger. Good citizens need to kill others if the nation state is to be strong. Taken to the extreme, as all this was taken to the extreme by Nazism, we have not only an absolutely racist state, an absolutely murderous state, but an absolutely suicidal state, as Foucault says. When Hitler saw that he was going to lose the war, he ordered the so-called final solution, which was the call to destroy all living conditions of German people. Brazilian philosopher Vladimir Safatli wrote an article called Welcome to the Suicidal State, which I quote here to end. Citation. There are alternatives, but if they are implemented, it will be other affects that will circulate, strengthening those that refuse such a fascist logic, finally allowing them to imagine another social and political body. Such alternatives include the consolidation of generic sol solidarity that makes us feel in a system of mutual dependence and support, in which my life depends on the lives of those who are not even part of my group, who are not in my place, who don't own my properties. This solidarity that is built in the most dramatic moments reminds the subjects that they participate in a common destiny and must sustain themselves collectively. Something very different from, if I get infected, it's my problem. End of citation. Well, people, I hope you liked the video. I want to thank my supporters on Patreon and other websites that have uh, classes, online classes with me. If you're interested, you can support the channel and still have online classes on Foucault and Nietzsche. The link will be in the description of the video. And see you next week.